Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today is going to be a, a, a summary of um, the concept of day count conventions and it's something I mentioned briefly in the, the previous video about how to calculate your bank savings interest. Um, it's, day count convention is essentially it's a, a convention which helps um, banks and, and other financial um, bodies uh, calculate the, the essentially the, the the time that has elapsed between two points um, when calculating the interest that has been earned um, over that time. So um, that it, it can be a little bit of a, a tricky um, a tricky concept um, and, and I'll just basically give you um, a couple of examples and I'm also going to point you to a, a really good kind of website that kind of gives a lot of sample day count conventions and also sample calculations. So I'm not going to go through all the calculations but um, I'll link the site down below and you can see it uh, on the left hand side too. So as I said, I'll, I'll link this site down below. Um, I found it a really, a really good explanation um, and I'll just sort of briefly go over. Um, so what, what it's saying is it's, it, the day count convention describes how the accrued interest is calculated on, on a variety of products like bonds, uh, etc. Et um, and, and the key point here is that, as I mentioned in the last video, Interest rates are normally quoted um, on an annual basis, meaning that the, the reference period um, over which that rate applies is one year. Okay, So the question is, when, when, when payments are calculated and actually paid over smaller intervals than one year, then we need a way to basically calculate between two dates what the, what the fraction of a year has actually elapsed. And there are various conventions used to define actually what what that fraction is. Um, obviously, you know this is all about things like well, some years have three six five days, some years have three six six days, um, some months have uh, thirty days, some have thirty one, and then obviously um, February is a, a law unto itself um, with uh, twenty eight slash twenty nine. So. Um, and, and actually, we haven't really talked too much about accrued interest yet, but this is an example of, um, of, of how this is applied in the sense that it, what it's saying is that um, over a period of time, the accrued interest that you've, that you've calculated is the, is the principal amount, right? Which so in, in the case of the bank account was the, was the outstanding balance in the bank account, multiplied by the, the rate on a per annum basis, which was the, the, the nominal annual rate on, on my bank account. Um, multiplied by the day count fraction. Okay, now referring back to the, the video um, where we calculated the, the savings interest, um, so we've discussed that, that, that is, on a daily basis the accrued interest is calculated every day, okay, um, and it's kept in a separate pot, and, and, and then at the end of the month it's, uh, that pot is then paid back into the account and, and, the, and the principal amount is, is, um, is updated. Um, but um, the, so the rate, obviously, we've discussed, the day count fraction in that particular example is essentially um, 1 divided by 365. Um, the reason being that, obviously, um, we, we are, as I said, we, we, we divide that, that annual rate, uh, which was 1.59, up until 365 chunks, each of which applies to one particular day within the year. So the day count fraction for each day to calculate the accrued interest is, is basically 1 divided by 365. Now, this year, 2016, is actually a leap year. So there are 366 days in, 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 this, in, in 2016. Now, so some, it, it depends on where you are in the world um, and, and, and which bank. And you, you can look at the terms and conditions of your actual bank statement and see, whether, um, see what day count convention applies to your bank account. But some some banks um, will be using um, they'll be using a uh, if we look at this one so they'll be using an actual over actual day count convention um, to to define what fraction of a year has elapsed on each given day um, and the reason is because um, this year is three six six days so some banks will be saying each day the day count fraction is 1 divided by 366 for days that fall within 2016. Some banks will be following a different convention, which is, let's say, uh, actual over, uh, let's say, actual over, sorry, NL over 365, right? So 
some of these conventions, the, the point I'm trying to make, and, and, and maybe it's, it's emerging, that this concept is all around saying, well, you know, we apply a certain convention, and the convention is either, okay, we assume there are 365 days in every year, and therefore every day that goes by, we divide by um, 1 divided by 365, whether or not it's a leap year. Or some conventions will say, no, no, um, the, the convention is that we will, we will divide by the, uh, the actual number of days within that year. So that could be either 365 or 366. Um, so that's a kind of introduction to, uh, to, to what, so basically the day count fraction, which is basically um, your, uh, sorry, there's a fly buzzing around my head. It's really aggressive as well. Um, then, so the day count fraction is, is, the, is the, the, the value that gets plugged into this kind of uh, accrued interest. Um, the day count convention is used to calculate the day count fraction. Okay, so if we look at some of these, um, so if you actually look at this page, uh, it's a really good page, it lists the main conventions used. Um, and and the, so the idea is that you apply these conventions and then you take two dates and you apply the convention and say, between these two dates, what fraction of a year has passed? Okay, that, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, so, be, and, and again, and it's fraction of a year because generally the interest rates are quoted um, with a reference period of one year. Okay, um, so, so basically, um, here are, the, here are the, so some of the, the more popular conventions. This is, this is um, so if we look at, say, 30 over 360, so historically, um, what what this means is that it 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 assumes that within a given year there are three hundred and sixty days, okay. Um, so effectively, if that was the case, then in our bank statement we would be dividing our um, our date our reference rate um, on a daily basis by time by three sixty, right? So obviously we'd be getting slightly uh, slightly less uh, sorry slightly more interest in on that basis, right? Um, so and thirty over three sixty um, was a convention used back in the day when um, when these calculations so interest calculations were done kind of more by hand and uh, um, so obviously the these numbers made made manual calculations much easier nowadays it's all done on computers and so typically um, th these um, you know it's not so problematic anymore to 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 build in the the nuances around leap years etc cetera, etc cetera. so. Um, so if we take the, if we take the top one, okay, just because it's probably the simplest conceptually, what it says is, okay, if I if I want to calculate the fraction of a year that has passed between two days, these days could be uh, five days apart, or one month, or six months, or nine months, or or even three years apart. Um, you know, you can you can so the the day count fraction can be more than more than a year, which just means you, we're talking about you know more than a year's worth of interest. But anyway, if we have two days, um, two two days, and we want to calculate the fraction of a year that has elapsed between those two days, and the and the convention is actual over actual, what that means is so now it's time to talk about what the numerator and the, the and the denominator mean in this ratio. So on the bottom, as we've already touched on, the denominator actual means the actual number of days within that year. Okay, so if if both the days that you're calculating the, the 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 day count fraction between, if they both fall within the same year, then the denominator is going to be the number of days in that year. It could be so it'll be three six five or it'll be three six six if it's a leap year. Um, the numerator is basically how many actual days, in terms of calendar days, can you count between. The, the, the day one and day two, right? So if it's the 28th of February, you'll count 28th of February, 29th, sorry, or if it's a leap year, and then 1st of March, 2nd, da, 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 da. And you just basically count the number of actual days all the way up to the, the date that you're calculating to, right? Um, that, so that's, that's the numerator. So that's the actual number of days um, that, 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 is, uh, that we're calculating as a fraction of a year. And on the bottom determines how many days are actually in this year. Okay, um, so what one point here, which is quite interesting, um, is if if part of this period, so let, let's say day one falls within a a leap year, and then day two 
falls outside a leap year. Um, so something quite interesting happens there. So basically, at that point, um, so let's say if we just, uh, I'll just move the thing over a bit to make room. So basically, um, if we have a situation where that's supposed to be a straight line, my apologies. So let's say this is uh, 1st of Jan 2016. So this is this is a leap year, right? 2016 is a leap year, as we know. And let's say um, let's say we're calculating the number of days between uh, the 15th of December 2015 and the uh, 15th of January 2016, right? So what we're saying is what the, what fraction of a year has elapsed between these two dates, right? Now, because 2015 is not a leap year, um, wh whereas 2016 is, and we're using actual over actual, then in actual fact, <laughs> what we have to do is we have to split this up into two components, right? Um, so it's basically, it's the number of days um, within the non-leap year, right, divided by 365, plus the number of days that are in the leap year divided by 366, okay? So in that case, the, 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 the day count fraction would be um, 17 divided by 365 plus 14 over 366, right? So that, that's just a little, uh, quite an interesting nuance there about actual or actual. Uh, just in case you're wondering why, why it's 14 and not 15. So when we talk about... Um, accrual periods, let's say, you know, or generally speaking, the day count fraction between two dates, and, and then generally we talk about the um, the from date is inclusive and the to date is exclusive. So we have 17 days, including the 15th in, uh, in December, and then we have 14 days, excluding the 15th in January. Okay, so that's, um, but just on the same example, um, uh, again, I'm not going to go through all these. This is just really to sort of <clears throat> give you give you an idea of the concept. So, um, if we if we're sort of doing, let's say, actual over three hundred and sixty, right? An actual over three hundred and sixty is basically um, it's the the it would be the the numerator. So this is basically actual over actual, right? Um, if we're doing actual over three hundred and sixty, then the numerator would be the exact number of days. Okay, which which is twenty eight. Twenty eight, sorry, thirty one. Don't know what I'm talking about. Um, divided by three sixty. Right. So what what we're saying is that um, we just assume that there are uh, three hundred sixty days in the year, and uh, and 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 then the numerator is just the number of days between the two. Another another interesting one to look at actually is the uh, is the the thirty over three sixty ones. Okay, so because the, so what what you're essentially saying is if we actually just go back to the same example. Um, so what was it again? It was fifteenth uh, of fifteenth of December fifteen to the fifteenth of Jan two thousand sixteen. And with obviously New Year's in the middle, and then this is a leap year. Although this, in this case, it, it makes no difference. So if we, um, if we if we want to calc if we want to look at the 30, 30 over three sixty, and you can see, I mean, to be honest, some of these get very intricate, and and I really just want to sort of illustrate the general concepts about what day count convention is 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 there to achieve. Um, 30 over 360, essentially, it means it's, it, it, it caps the number of days within a given month to 30, okay? So, so for example, um, we, um, so in, in our example here, even though we have 31 days in September, right? 31 days in September, but we're going to cap it at 30, which means that our, um, that our day count convention in this case is going to be Instead of being, uh, uh, it's, it's going to be 
16 days in December plus 14 days in January, which is obviously 30, 30 over 360. Um, that's kind of pure coincidence that that happens to be the same number as the actual name of the day count convention. But um, um, so, and if you if you look down these on this page, which I'll which as I say I'll link down below, you can see all the different sample calculations, right? Um, which is uh, which is really useful, and um, so I'm not going to go into more detail now. I probably I might delve back into this subject in more depth later on, but I just want to give you a, give you a sort of an example. And I think the key takeaways the key takeaways are that um, that this calculation of between two dates, what fraction of a year has has elapsed, and how do we define a fraction of the year? It's a very important thing that comes up all the time in fixed income finance, and it's something that um, you need a bit of help using a convention because some of the there are too many unknowns that you need to uh, take into account. So, um, hope you found that useful, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. We're going to start talking about um, about some actual instruments like uh, bonds. So, veering away from savings, talking about bonds. Then we're going to start talking about time value of money and and how bonds are priced and that kind of thing. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.